Hi, this is lecture number eight and is starting to talk about the practicalities of treatment and we'll open with the stage one appliance. I actually think it's a very good appliance and uh, we'll talk more about alternatives later. But my father used to expand all his patients who had narrow jaws at the age of five. He measured this by putting a coin between each deciduous tooth. If at the age of five, you can't get a coin between every individual tooth, then he was taught you should expand. This is back in the early 1920s. And he believed it all his life, and he convinced me that it was a good idea. Now, um, when I went to university, I was told that's nonsense. Expansion always relapses, and so you're wasting your time. So, you know, two different opinions like that made me inquire. And uh, I read a lot of research, and I was impressed by the work of Skeller. He actually used metal implants in the palate to see what actually happened. And he found that when you expanded, um, it was a roughly 50-50 movement of the uh, um, central suture and uh, the teeth and alveolus. Remember, he was treating um, patients around 8 to 12, and he was also um, expanding with um, removable appliances at about half a millimeter a week. But that was his finding. What was remarkable and really impressed me was that um, after the expansion, the teeth and alveolus were likely to relapse, but the central suture remained permanent. And I've been able to confirm that on subsequent occasions, and it's a point worth remembering. Most of the relapse is in the teeth and alveolus. And ever since then, I've wondered why people should be so upset about the bit they lose when they've got a very good game. Anyway, um, the relapse of the teeth and alveolus, I found subsequently, is more to do with the position of the tongue than anything else. So if you expand an arch, the actual bone in the, of the central maxilla will be stable, but if you keep your tongue on the palate, so will the teeth and alveolus. Um, so it, uh, this actually created my first confrontation with the British authorities because they were telling me in no uncertain terms that I shouldn't expand, um, but I was expanding and finding I could get good and semi-permanent results. The more I corrected the posture, the better the results. Um, now, this led me to design the stage one appliance. It's essentially a simple removable appliance, but it does have many features which I find are lacking from other expansion appliances. One of the most important things is to fit a really rigid, well-retained appliance. If it's loose, and many appliances are, then it's not going to be effective. So I use Crozac cribs, which I find very effective, and an eight-year-old child is not strong enough to even remove the appliance. However, um, I put a crib in the center of the arch each side, usually on the second deciduous molars. This gives me a really firm anchorage in the middle of the arch, and I then have a rest uh, behind the upper incisors in front, and a rest on the six behind, which means the appliance is really rigid, and every movement you make is effective. Um, I also open at a special rate. 
I did this on after a lot of research again, um, based really on a, a an Australian who I found was recommending the expansion at one millimeter per week. He was talking about tissue movement, not expansion. But I adopted this rate, and I have found that it is far more stable and causes no damage. I'm quite sure it is the natural rate of movement that the body likes. Um, anyway, I found that with this, I would get opening of the central suture with very little tilting of the teeth or alveolus, which of course is ideal. Um, but the rate of movement has to be absolutely right, or it, it, you won't achieve this. Many people use rapid expansion, and from the research I know this is very, very damaging. But they tell me it's the only way they can get the suture to open without tilting the teeth. I do think they should consider some of the alternatives. But um, the other wires on the uh, appliance are mainly to move individual teeth, particularly as you expand, you need to be able to close the incisors so there's not spacing. But one unique feature of my design are the two shelves on each side because I expand the upper by about 10 millimeters, but at this point I don't expand the lower, that's important. But because I'm doing this, there's a risk of a telescopic bite. But to avoid that, I fit a shelf on each side. Now the shelf is slightly sloped so that it tends to move the mandible into the midline. It also provides a very smooth surface, so the mandible naturally slides forward. So the stage one both expands and takes the mandible forward. But it is the combination of these various abilities which I think makes the stage one, which I call the stage one bioblock, far more effective than any other appliance I have known, and there are many, many copies.